jump straight on to the uh, next keynote presentation by Sebastian Bern. Sebastian told me, I'm actually a very practical guy and I'm really interested in what design and industry can mean for each other and how industry can help design forward. So it's an important subject for today and Sebastian, the floor is yours. I call myself an industrial designer in, uh, in, in, in a traditional and direct sense. And what I'd like to do this afternoon is show you six different projects uh, which describe different ways of working uh, for a designer and describes different ways of working with industry or with other people in general. And I'd like to do this around a table. I'd like to, ideally we'd all be sitting around a dinner table together, but that's not going to be practically possible. So um, I'm going to start by talking about this uh, exhibition which I had recently, which is uh, which called A Table, um, or A Table, which in fact um, expresses it better, I think. Uh, this was in London, and this is a gallery space where uh, I made a display of objects that I've made over the last 10 or 15 years which uh, are concerned with uh, eating, drinking and uh, sharing time together and the idea was during the day we have the exhibition, people can come and look at it in a normal kind of way. Uh, in fact on the left you, you, you see along the table uh, the, the dinner progressing, you see different things used. Uh, on the left you have the starter, on the right you have the dessert, so uh, in this way you have kind of a timeline. But um, there are many, many objects designed for different people at different times on this table. And what I'd like to do is, is draw your attention to the fact that actually uh, in the evenings this exhibition became a series of dinners. Uh, and as we zoom in we see a little bit more some of the pieces. Uh, but actually what really counts is the fact that these, all these objects were used uh, all the cookware that was used in the kitchen, all the items that were used during the dinner were things that we've designed for different people uh, over the years. And uh, this moment of uh, sharing, using, and enjoying the objects was the, was the key moment. You know, uh, judging or seeing an object in a gallery situation or in a shop situation is very different from appreciating it in use. So this was very important that I had this uh, dual possibility. So a series of dinners took place and uh, every morning we had to reset up the exhibition which was an enormous amount of work as you can imagine. But um, it, it was very, very interesting because usually the people who came for the dinners, which were members of the public, they were not invited by me, they were uh, people who bought tickets effectively uh, to join the dinners, um, were all different people. They hadn't seen the exhibition during the day, most of them, so their only experience of the objects was uh, during the dinner. I'm going to pass now um, on to talking in a little bit more detail uh, about some of the projects and give you a little bit of background about each one. There's six projects. The first uh, is for a very small company. Uh, oh, we're missing a slide. Oh. Okay. Uh, is here we see what was actually consumed during the dinner. This is a dessert that was uh, created in this container um, that was not created to be a dessert container but we improvised for the dinners. Um, and the story begins in Wales. Uh, it's a very small company who's, who set up recently uh, with the idea that everything they make should be produced locally in Wales, uh, which is very nice. There's a lot of resource there that's unknown to most people uh, and in fact there is also some support from the local government and he received a grant of five thousand pounds which is not very much uh, uh, which he was allowed to spend with a small injection molding company uh, and he approached me and said we have five thousand pounds we have one tool that we can make with that or we have a certain amount of money that we can uh, you know, a certain amount we can do with this money uh, and in, effectively it's a, a choice of making one tool. So, uh, and he asked me to design this object for him and this is 
the object. It's a landscape box. It's a very small box, which uh, is inspired by the landscape of Wales. Um, it's like a microenvironment. Um, you can use it for putting treasures. Uh, you can use it as an ashtray. You could do whatever you. I mean, it's this. Its function is not very important, really. The, what is important is is the fact that you create this microenvironment that, with color changes and material changes, you can make live. And more importantly, that in fact it's the same tool used twice, which is obviously important. So there's a technical or uh, functional innovation. And the profile of the landscape is such that it's reflected over, so you, you can use the same piece twice, and so get more for your money. I mention that because it's important to me that not only that there is a story to tell about uh, an object in terms of its design, but there is also uh, a story to tell about the creation and, and if you like, technical uh, innovation, even if it's small, uh, the thinking that goes on behind that, uh, that people might not even notice when they buy it. It remains a very simple object that is available in different colors. Uh, now um, on to something quite different, another collaboration, this time with Tfal. Uh, you'll all be familiar with the name. Um, who you might know in this context, uh, most famous perhaps uh, for the non-stick pans, but there's a great deal more to the, to, to the brand. And uh, I've been working together with Tfal for a number of years on, on different projects. And I think uh, it's even in maybe in the last six years, I can see how how much of a change has taken place within the company in terms of how they approach the projects and uh, what, uh, what they expect the projects to achieve. Um, this, this is the first piece of a family called uh, Natura, which is a, a brand uh, or range, the name of a range of products, uh, which was designed um, around natural cooking in the sense of keeping all the goodness and keeping as much of the good things in your food in. Uh, it has uh, also you know, advances in surface t technology, which means that you can cook with less fat and so on, so on and so forth. So there's a health element. Uh, and above all, in design terms, it's something that hopefully re reflects the, uh, the, the health and nature aspect of, of the family. Um, it's also 95% recycled or 100% recycled aluminium. Uh, so there's more to the range here. Each of the products has a little astuce, as they say in French, uh, to, to try and make cooking a healthier and easier experience when using these pans. Uh, the grill pan, for example, drains the oil off to one side, which can then be poured out very easily. Um, so right down to the packaging, recycled card packaging, much less, it's not a complete box. So it's a wrap rather than a complete box, recycled, uh, vegetable dye, inks, etc. So what's important, the reason I'm showing you this is that for me, industry is very important. And it's these products are bought in the supermarket. Uh, and there's another project afterwards, which is also for Tifa, also bought in the supermarket. And it's through making incremental and intelligent design uh, at this level that you really begin to have an effect because in terms of affecting the world at large, uh, because you know they sell many, many thousands of these products, um, and, and and that's very satisfying from a designer's point of view. This is another project for them, which started in a slightly different way, and I'm showing you essentially a synopsis of if, of the brief here. Uh, the most important. You know, there's a marketing aspect, there's a production aspect, there's a material aspect, which is a recycled PET. Uh, but for me, as a designer, the most important thing was that in the brief, I had a specific amount of material that I was allowed to use for each typology of object. So you're starting with like a ball of clay, if you like, uh, and this is how much PET. It's in fact equivalent to about uh, a, wa a small water bottle, uh, which are recycled into each of these um, items. and. Uh, I think that's a, another way around, which is 
a, a very nice way of approaching a, a problem. In fact, it meant that it was actually very little material, uh, bearing in mind what we had to create physically. And the sketches here, to, to, to illustrate that essentially we were working with a surface that we had to uh, manipulate and form to give strength and comfort and perform the function. So it was really, really quite minimal. Uh, the results are these, which are fairly regular in many senses, uh, and as in the you know cooking utensils for everyday purposes that you buy in the supermarket, but they are approached uh, in a different way with intelligence and uh, you know in a way that you would think would be correct in today's in, in today's world. I'm now going to skip to something completely different, which uh, is, is my own production. Uh, I've had an interest in glass for some time, um, and I'm going to show you, because on the table you see a lot of glass, but uh, although I don't blow the glass myself, um, over a number of years I've worked with different uh, craftsmen and small factories producing things in glass. These were some of the things used in the dinners. but. Um, more specifically, some of the objects, this wine carafe on the left with its matching um, glass is one that fills from underneath. So you, you put a cork in the neck, you fill it through the funnel area on the top right, uh, giving lots of air to the wine. You close it and turn it over, ready to be used. And it's, it's really... So it's, it's just going back a second. For me, the importance here is the magic of, even with the glass and the carafe, is that you have this wine above the cork and you're convinced it's going to leak. Everyone who sees it um, is, 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 you know, they're waiting for the, for the leak. Uh, but actually, <coughs> you know, occasionally there's a drop, but uh, that energy and that tension is what makes it um, special. <laughs> um, and, but it also, makes it not a general consumer product. So uh, um, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Um, this is a, recent, a more recent project uh, along the same line. It's looking at water. Uh, it's all about filtration. Having worked a lot on wine and consuming alcohol, I thought I needed a break. Some water was, was uh, <laughs> what we needed. And this is a tower that uh, that filters and, and, and essentially um, is a carafe, but rather than a plastic filter that you buy in many supermarkets, you actually have something with a value that um, gives the beauty of the water uh, time to, time to uh, speak, and that whole process of dripping through it um, is, is very beautiful. Um, it then stacks up and, and can be used in different ways. Uh, there's a whole family of different, of different items. Perhaps I haven't got time to talk too much about individual projects, but uh, this is um, the catalog from an exhibition from a couple of years ago, which charts uh, a, a whole series of personal projects uh, that have taken place over the years, um, at that time over 10 years, um, uh, tw 20 years, sorry, <laughs> um, which was the anniversary of my studio uh, at that point. Starting with this um, very early, this was I made for my wedding, which is for uh, a shot which was consumed during the wedding. Um, but uh, and many of these projects were created for specific events, and, and again, we're going back to that notion of sitting around the table and creating something for, for an event. Um, in fact, the, the water family was created for the dinners that you saw at the very beginning. Um, this as part of uh, another, of the same bunch of, of work on using corks. This again, you know, we're all familiar with the wine box. Uh, unfortunately, the quality of the wine is not normally very good, but uh, here, you know, open up the wine box, remove the potentially very beautiful internal uh, bag from inside and present it in a different way, and suddenly you've got a high-value product from a very low-value product. This, again, the contents, in this case, uh, a clear alcohol crate, 
in this decanter, a magnifying effect, which on a table creates magic um, as the people opposite you or the objects on the table are uh, sort of distorted and magnified. So again, all about the experience of using the object, which is most important to me. Something completely different. Um, this is a, a coat stand for a, a French company called Tolix, which you will probably be familiar with. This is their factory um, about two years ago. It's in the Bourgogne region, and this is a chair that they're most famous for. And it's an interesting story because uh, Tolix was a company that very nearly went bankrupt, was taken over by their accountant, um, who then set up a team of people around her uh, to work on the design and development of new product. And although they have this sort of uh, historical um, strength and you know, a factory that looks like this, um, how, how, to pull, how to push that in, into the future and how to develop this into something that retains value for the brand and the historical uh, references, um, but creates something new. And it's, it's, it's something I've been involved with for a couple of years. In fact, uh, two of the men up here in the picture are um, Normal Studio, two designers from Paris, uh, who's, who are art directors um, and who manage all the creative uh, input into this company. Um, and they um, invited me to participate. Um, there's new machines. This is all sort of uh, computer controlled uh, cutting and bending machinery, which has since been installed. We've worked on different projects. This, uh, again, coat rack with an umbrella stand. In a way, this is not so much about the projects. Um, an endless wall hanging opportunity, uh, rather like tiles. Bookshelves that extend as you, as your collection of books or CDs or whatever, uh, or, or, or whatever increases. Very simple products with an idea. A desk which has endless possibilities inside for cable, uh, all the multi plugs, storage, etc. Slight, you know, has a sense of its past, but at the same time addresses. Uh, contemporary needs in terms of this is a home office desk. Um, this, no, these are four of my own projects, but they've done other things which have you know, been very successful and the company has grown enormously. Uh, and the last time I was there, we viewed the new factory, which uh, is currently empty, or in fact no longer, but at that time was empty, which is absolutely immense. Um, and you, know, it's, you can really see a genuine uh, uh, result in for a manufacturing company um, based almost exclusively on good design practice and development um, in real in real terms, um, and in fact, I think this year the um, director of the company was awarded the Légion d'Honneur for, for this for this achievement, and it's a pleasure to be part of that. Um, last project. Uh, which is a collaboration with an artist. Um, it's called Colorware. Uh, best seen here from the top view. It was uh, a, a work which I did together with an artist called Sophie Smallhorn. <coughs> She's a, a color artist mainly, uh, but now also a consultant. Um, and we started with the idea that what if color was no longer something you added at the end of a project. You know, what if, which it, which it is today, you know, people design something and say, oh, what color should we make it? Yeah. Uh, if we, what if we treated color as a material, as a solid material? So the first, the first thought was, you know, how can we, what, what would we work with and how can we approach a project uh, where, where color is solid? Um, so it's a solid material we work with, coriander, wood, felt, uh, metals of different kinds. Um, and the idea was really to make an object that uh, is a functional object, they're plates, essentially. Uh, but when they're not being plates, they are a, a, a totem, if you like, a pile of plates, in simplistic terms. That becomes a composition that you, you don't need to tidy away in your cupboard, but um, 
you can leave it. Uh, you're happy to leave it out. Um, and the idea is really that the more you use it, you know, there's no di there's no danger it chipping off because it's a paint finish or a glaze. It's a solid it's a solid material. So you work. The more you use it, the better it becomes, um, and the more you want to use it. Uh, It's interesting that actually I'm now noticing that um, here, here we presented it as, as place settings, but we're, we've kind of gone full circle uh, and we started with uh, a table setting and we've now finished back with a table setting. Um, uh, this was where it was first exhibited at Saatchi Gallery um, last year. Um, and that is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, I'd be very happy to take any questions.